usually like to select my entire object and duplicate it and move that to an archive folder with it not being active in the scene, just to have this as a backup. Then select your object again and hit Control J if you need to merge any parts of it. Now take your singular mesh, duplicate it, and hide that duplicate for now. We will use this duplicate later for the transition, but for right now, let's just focus on the liquid simulation. With your object selected, go to Quick Effects, Quick Liquid, and now scale your domain so that the very bottom of it is touching the very bottom of your object and the top is just reaching the top. For more domain manipulations, I like to add my camera into the scene so I can see what the framing will be like because you want to be trying to hide the sides of your domain from the camera. Now we can actually tweak the Mantaflow settings. Under the Physics tab, I usually change two main things with physics simulations, the resolution divisions and also the time scale. For the resolution of your simulation, the little box in the bottom corner of the domain represents one unit of this resolution. So it's good to reference that when considering what resolution to go with, because you're gonna to wanna to make sure that small box is skinnier than the skinniest parts of your object. For testing out the simulation, I usually use 64 or 128, and for a final bake, I usually go to 256 or 512. Now in terms of time scale, one is supposed to represent normal time. I usually find this is too fast for a liquid simulation, so I like to bring it down to the 0.5 or 0.8 range. For our scenario though, we're going to want a bit of time at the very beginning of the clip in which the liquid doesn't move, so it has time to transition from the object into the liquid. In order to do this, we can keyframe the time scale. Select the point at which you want your liquid to start moving and keyframe a value at 0, then select a point at which you want it to stop moving and keyframe the value at 0.5 or 0.8 or whatever you think is best. If you want to get extra fancy, on the dope sheet you can press Control tab and go into the graph editor and mess with interpolation between these two values. For my scenario, I turn off the border collisions of the domain with all sides except for the very bottom. This is to avoid the liquid actually splashing up on the sides, which will make it really, really noticeable where your domain ends. Go to cache and set the end frame to be the same as your scene. Set type to modular and check is resumable, so you can pause and view the simulation in the middle of its bake. Now you can actually start testing out the different baking. Two things to be aware of when you think you're ready to do your final bake is that firstly, increasing the resolution divisions will increase the water in your scene and can change the physics of the water simulation dramatically. And secondly, are these two values of the minimum and maximum time steps. This is a little bit more minute, but if you raise these values to something like six and eight, you can tell a slight difference in the velocity of the liquid. I usually find that increasing these will increase the flow slightly, but I really just think it's doing a more realistic simulation of the fast flow as some parts of the water are moving faster than others and pushing against each other in more realistic ways. So overall, it is really good to increase this, but this will also dramatically increase your baking time. For my specific example, I end up using time steps between six and eight and overall resolution of 512. Once you're ready to do your final, final bake, I'll change the cache type back to all, and then also check on mesh. This will now bake in not only the particles, but the mesh around it as well. Now, before you do your final bake, we're gonna go over the texturing and the transition part. And this is only because I've sometimes found there's a glitch in Blender for when I try to adjust the keyframe values of the texture of the liquid domain that'll actually delete the bake. I don't know exactly what's up with that. So for now, do a lower resolution bake, but with a mesh so that you can get the timing with the transition. Now add it in HDRI, which is really, really necessary for this one, just so you can get the liquid looking good. So try not to get, go for a super plain white studio one, maybe choose an outdoor one or something that has a little more color in it. Also under the film tab, make sure to have the transparent box checked off so it's easier to focus on the model. Now for the transition, we're basically gonna be phasing out the real model with the liquid simulation with some keyframes. I like to take this a step further and actually have the liquid simulation start out as a similar texture to the model and then slowly fade into the full water material while the water is already falling. This isn't completely necessary, but I think it's a cool thing to add a little bit more of that smoother transition. First, select the liquid and hide it. Then unhide your duplicated object from the start. Go to the shader editor, add a transparent and a mix shader node. Connect your original material and the transparent to the mix shader and animate the factor between this over time by pressing I over the value to add a keyframe. Make sure to click this little button, which will allow you to see all of your keyframes at once. I usually let there be a good half a second to a second at the very start, where it's just the complete normal texture. And then I make sure to have the object completely transparent by the time the liquid starts falling down. Now select the nodes of your entire material, copy it, go to the liquid domain and paste it into that material. This won't paste the keyframes though, so you'll have to create new ones, but for these ones, make it start out as transparent and fade into the material. Add another mix shader node and connect your old mix shader and the water material to the two sockets and animate that factor to slowly fade into the full water material. I like to overlap this transition so it starts just before the previous factor node ends its transition and then also continues throughout a little bit of the liquid falling down. And at this point, I finally go in and do my long bake. And there you have it. 
that is the completed render. What prize should we have for our? What are we at right now? What are you? Or what are you at? I don't want to say we anymore because I missed the last We're, video. You listened last video. Yeah, you're or out of it. You got to. I wasn't permitted was to participate. He was asleep. I was banned. He was asleep when I was filming. It was like 4 p.m. It was like 4 p.m. I was taking a nap. You didn't even give me a chance. <laughs> Yeah. All right, guys, if you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe, tune in for the next one where hopefully Isaac will give me another chance to uh, participate, maybe. I will say, I do respect, I do respect sleep, especially, especially when you're doing bakes. If you're baking something, although no, it, well, doing yeah, bakes overnight, I always like stress out because like, the first thing in the what morning, the I need to get up. On fire while you're asleep and it burns the whole house down. What? <laughs> where did that come from? If you're baking something. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs>